first of all, please describe your life for me right now in one word or one sentence, if you can. Ooh, wow, my life. Eloquent, in-depth transition. Oh, I like that. Very eloquently put as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've got a minute to tell me about Gangs of London season two. Oh, Gangs of London season two. Gangs of London season two expands, deepens, and stretches the world that we have come to know and love. And you will see some of your favorite characters in situations that you never imagined you'd see or find them. But we discover hidden depths, we discover hidden truths, and uh, the pieces on the chessboard move rapidly with the fatal consequences. But in the end, power is restored. The question is, who holds the power? This is the story of Gangs of London. That is the question, isn't it? And we kind of have a bit of a, a revelation, I guess, at the end of episode one. I'm trying not to give too many spoilers. Uh -huh. I must admit, I, I screamed quite a few times watching that episode. Lots of things that I didn't expect. Are we going to find that throughout the series? Am I going to be screaming for the next nine or ten episodes? Yes, you are. Buckle up, bu buckle in. This is just the beginning. That was the appetizer. So if that's the appetizer, just imagine what the next few courses are going to be like. Was it very different making season two from season one? I guess with season one, you didn't know how it would be, it would be received, if people would love it or not. People have loved that you're back from season two, for season two, excuse me. Was that pressure? No, it wasn't pressure at all. I think we also came out of the pandemic, and I think everybody was not only excited to get back to work, but more than anything to reconnect with friends, with our, with our own little gang's family. And I, I have to say a very, very special thank you to our COVID teams who kept the machine ticking over. You know, uh, mm -hmm. this is a very big show, lots of moving parts, you know, but our, our COVID team were just exceptional. So thank you to them. And I, I, I hope that season two is a, is a gift to them uh, for all of their amazing hard work and dedication. It certainly comes across on screen, absolutely. Do you have any standout moments from making season two? Oh, yes. Um, well, there is uh, Ed's reaction to, you know, that moment that you've spoken of, uh, which, yeah. was, which was impactful to, uh, to, uh, to sort of commit to, uh, to screen. But... Uh, there's also uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, moment when um, Ed is reintroduced uh, for season two. And because a lot of us hadn't actually seen each other uh, mm -hmm. up until that point, to sort of clock eyes with Orly, to clock eyes with Asif, uh, mm -hmm. first of all, in character, before we'd actually sort of, you know, bonded as, as, uh, as colleagues, was very mm -hmm. special and very exciting. And it gave me the sense of going, yeah, we're back. Gangs of London is back, baby. <laughs> do, do you ever have moments in the show? If, if there's one thing about Gangs of London, you guys are not afraid to kill off main characters. You're not <laughs> no. afraid of that at all. So do you ever go into it thinking, this could literally be my last day on set? Oh, yeah, all the time. However, one of the, uh, I guess, uh, one of the privileges of, uh, of, of my seniority <laughs> is that uh, I have forewarning and foreknowledge of things so you know i'm i'm i i sort of get advance warning of of certain things which is which is a little bit of a relief but hey you know mm -hmm. it it dangles over you all the time which it's it's, yeah. it's thrilling and, and exciting but then you're always thinking yeah but i i still I, i've still got to work i've still got to work mm -hmm. um but yeah no it, it does you're right it's the thrill of knowing how and why is always exciting and i have to ask because i was wondering from the moment I went into um, episode one, is Sean really dead? Because I don't believe it. I don't know. That, and that's my answer. That is my answer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I love about this season. It'll just, I feel like it's gonna keep us guessing. You kept us guessing all the way through season one. I'm looking forward to, to guessing all the way through season two. But if you weren't 
a seasoned actor and in this incredible new series, what would be your plan B? What would you have done instead? Ooh, I would be an academic in a university, uh, teaching some very esoteric uh, uh, branch of uh, Afro-futurist literature. I would get lost in ideas and magic and words. I'd be the, I'd basically be the, that kind of cool hippie professor that everyone is drawn to, but is also like, is this guy really on this planet or is he <laughs> somewhere else? I'm compelled, but also afraid in a good way, not in a creepy way. <laughs> worlds away from Ezemani, I must say, absolutely oh, yeah. worlds away. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what has made you sad, mad and glad this week. Ooh, what has made me sad this week is the clouds, the clouds, the end of summer, the beginning of autumn. What has made me mad is the roaring return of uh, traffic. <laughs> uh, what has made me glad? Gangs of London season two being <laughs> given out to the world after all our blood, sweat, and literal tears. <laughs> <laughs> it must be good to finally be able to talk about the season after it's been made. You know, you're probably sitting on all the spoilers. It probably feels good to, to be able to talk to people about it now. Yes, it does. But there's also that part of us that goes, oh, no, I, I don't want to give you too much. I don't want to spoil it for you because I know what's coming. <laughs> And that's the thing, isn't it? And I can tell it, Steve. <laughs> so uh, apart from Gangs of London season two, what are you watching right now? Ooh, what am I watching? Well, that's an interesting question. I have started, uh, and because I'm a little bit late to the party, but I've kind, kind of become a, a, a low-key new fan of How to Get Away with Murder. Starring oh, yeah, the really? one and only Viola Davis. You know, um, I mean, wow. Yeah, I'm enjoying that. Very much. That's my that's that's my that's my guilty pleasure. I'm loving mm -hmm. that. I'm loving that show right now. I mean, if only it was still going, and we could have had some sort of how to get away with gangs of London murder crossover type thing. <laughs> it from, would have been a mess. From from, <laughs> from your ears to the producers' pockets to the right. There we go. Etc. <laughs> Etc. Et <laughs> I need a cameo on that because it was my <laughs> idea. <laughs> what are you reading right now? Ah well. I'm actually reading a lot of very uh, esoteric spiritual literature. I'm actually reading uh, There is a Spiritual Solution to Every Problem. And that has been a very um, interesting exploration into, uh, you know, mindset, you know, uh, connection with the rest of the world. But it also has a wonderful kind of philosophical, practical link to the work of Dr. Steve Peters, which I'm also reading, you know, The Chimp Paradox, you know, Making a Way Through the Jungle, all of these things, the, the spiritual as well as uh, the psychological and practical. So, yeah, between those two, that's the world I'm in right now in a literary sense. Wow. Yeah. That's a good world to be in. And what are you listening to? What's, what are you wrapping your ears around? Well, my spirit animal, Gregory Porter. Oh, I mean, lovely. I mean, basically, Gregory, Gregory Porter is my spirit animal. You know? There we go. Yeah. Nice and relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last thing that you managed to watch on stage? Oh, well, actually, uh, I watched uh, The Crucible at the National Theatre, the Olivier, yes. Um, literally just a couple of nights ago. And it's, it blew me away. It's, uh, I, mean, I love the play by Arthur Miller. Um, it's very timely again, even though it was written in, in the 50s. It's, uh, yeah, it is a thrilling theatrical night out. I, I thoroughly and highly recommend it. Now, tell me, do you have a bucket list? And if you do, what is on it? Ooh, do I have a bucket list? You see, I do. <laughs> but the thing is that some of the golden things on my bucket list are so golden and so precious that if I speak them out of turn, the mm -hmm. spirits might hear me and they might grant me the way, but I might not be ready. But I will uh -huh. say, I will offer you this. Mm -hmm. I will say that on my bucket list is that I'm nowhere near the top of the mountain yet. 
now I'm going to give you the opportunity to celebrate someone else. Who are you really rating right now? Whose work are you really into? Oh, wow. Well, you know what? I mean, you've got to begin and end with the one and only Viola Davis. You know, yeah. I, I'm really, really enjoying, uh, the, as I said, I'm late to the party with How to Get Away with Murder, but just enjoying the, this, this powerhouse of a performer. Uh, I think it is also very, very important that, you know, she what, what she has done and what she represents in this world of colorism, to have this amazing, mm -hmm. beautiful, dark-skinned, black creative, black woman dominating with complexity, with, with sex appeal, with maturity. It's, it's groundbreaking. It really is groundbreaking and, and, and refreshing. And the, I suppose the flip side of that is, well, whilst it, it shouldn't have to be, but it is. And, and that I really just, yeah, I mean, wow. Just mm -hmm. wow. I celebrate her. If you haven't read our autobiography, thoroughly recommend it. It's a great read. So get into that one. And so finally, back to Gangs of London, what would you like people to take away from season two? What would I like people to take away from season two? Mm -hmm. Is that your favorite characters <laughs> are, still, are still fighting. They're fighting even harder. They're fighting even harder. Uh, so stick with them. That's all I'm saying. Interesting. Sean's not dead. We cannot wait. Lucy and Slash, Edzamani, <laughs> hope you stay safe for the rest of season two. Hope you make it all the way through. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time, Afia. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Afia. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.